this video doesn't have a happy ending. <laughs> where it all began. Now I don't know if you're familiar with a company called Stumac but I work with them sometimes. They're out in the USA and they specialise in luthery gear, luthery equipment, luthery tools. And in one of my meetings with them just having a chat they mentioned there was a pedal kit going that I might be interested in trying. Now pedals were something that I've never actually got into before. I've used pedals on stage sure and I've tried them out but that's as far as my knowledge goes on the matter. However I do think it's really important to try new things so I agreed to give it a whirl. I opened up the box, had a look at what was in front of me and it was quite overwhelming but I did have a soldering iron and a good attitude so I just decided to go for it. One thing that I wasn't scared of is painting the enclosure. Now this is a clone of a pedal called the Clon Centaur and because centaurs are notoriously celestial or at least I know that from my knowledge of Harry Potter I decided to go with a moon themed enclosure. I was visiting my mum in Norfolk this weekend. She's an artist and she uses a lot of hydro dipping in her work so I took it to her and we did some together. Here's how that panned out. masking up my enclosure properly, I think it was all going pretty well at this point. So, with a newfound excitement for the journey ahead, I cracked on with the electronics back in my workshop in London. Okay, now instantly I'm panicking because I don't have any of... well, I certainly don't have this. And I don't know if I have any wire strippers, but luckily I'm in a massive building <clears throat> full of other people who make stuff so I'm hoping that won't be a problem. What I will say though is if you're getting into building pedals a lot it probably does make sense to invest in this. Anyway let's let's go oh there's more stuff okay which I don't have any of so don't worry if you don't and you're building this as well we can fight through together. One of the key parts to a successful build is taking the time to get to know all of your parts. Okay I read all the instructions at this point because if there's something I'm really good at it's missing stuff by not reading the instructions thoroughly. Little did I know, there was one key thing that would be my downfall hidden at the back of the manual. Now after laying out all the components beautifully, which are all colour coded, I set about trying to use my soldering iron. I haven't really used this before, it's a cordless one though, which is quite exciting. Okay, I've just got to a point where I'm, so I'm reading about capacitors at the moment and um, there's this <laughs> bit that says, installing capacitors with the polarity backwards will make the circuit malfunction and quickly destroy the capacitor even causing it to explode. That doesn't sound good. I don't want it to explode. I hope I make it to the end of this build. Oh well, I guess we push on. I think the way to do it will be to check five times. And dear listener, check five times I did. And I was struck by the tiny nature of the circuit board, even smaller than most of the work I do as an acoustic guitar maker. And not having magnifying glasses truly tested my patience and precision. Just a word on this soldering iron, uh, I don't recommend it for this job, that's because instead of the very tip of the iron heating up, it only gets hot on the edges of the attachment. A friend in the studio opposite me brandished his soldering iron at me later that night, but by then it wasn't really worth changing irons as the work was almost up. So while the cordless aspect was kind of handy, I would not recommend this Dremel iron for a job like this. I suggest that it's for bigger, less precise jobs because it was really hard to get a clean solder. 
Oh, I don't even want to admit how long that took me, but all of the uh, resistors are completely in now, which is very exciting. So I'm going to move on to the... Where are we at? I'm so hot. Heat wave in Britain. Not good to use soldering irons. Note the stripe running the length of each cap. This identifies the negative lead. Okay, what? Oh, okay, that's fine. So the negative one seems to be all the shorter one. That's correct. Got nice little um, cardboard things on them. Except I can't get them off. Hmm, that's very annoying. Nice and sturdy. Made their way here from America, so I guess it's better than arriving with a broken piece of kit. Pop you in there. I put plasters on to make sure I didn't cut myself, but we're all good. This is just going bang next door, so let's get the stripey one and put the stripey one in the negative hole. It's like a really funky jigsaw puzzle. Yeah, this is the thing, right, that I have about this set. Some of the colours aren't exactly the same, or the pictures aren't exactly the same, which, for, if you're like me, is uh, not a vibe. One UV... Okay, it's 50... Okay, I'm going to go with the fact that even though it says it's grey and it's actually red, I'm going to go with with my, um, my common sense and say that it's just different coloured, so let's go ahead and do that. It is some ungodly hour in the workshop right now, but I am so close. I've got everything on that I kind of are all the fiddly bits. And now I'm going to cut the wire. So close. So I'm cutting it into sections like as instructed. <laughs> Like the stampy pedal. Even though it works yet, yeah. hopefully it does. Yeah, I've absolutely no idea. Well, there's nothing we can do now. Nothing we can do now. guys day two so close couldn't finish it off last night apollo was on at full volume i was going mad everyone was going mad definitely stayed a bit too long but oh well i think it's all fine i'm gonna crack on now catch you on the flip side and yeah i am wearing the same clothes as yesterday i'm not doing things like taking a shower until this damn pedal is built now at this point i was getting my dc jack on as well as installing all the fun bits like actually soldering the thing inside the enclosure which was pretty groovy miraculously i hadn't made any actual mistakes yet as far as i was aware like the led light was in too which was highly exciting you know how it is <laughs> stickers on it. I have put the tone knobs on. That's what they're called, aren't they? And uh, closed up the enclosure. And now I think it is only fair. Oh, is that going to focus? Oh, come on. Oh yeah. That's the good stuff. Oh, I think it's only fair now that I go home and give this a test. So we're back to this stage and I'm going to tell you how the narrative unfolded from here. 
So I, I shot that stuff. I got back home. I was really excited. My friend was at home and he was there sitting on the sofa and he is a bit of a, a pedal nerd himself. So I was like, oh, I've just built this pedal. I'm going to go and plug it in. And he was like, great. And I said, can I borrow your um, DC jack input? And he said, yeah, of course you can. So there I was, all ecstatic, wandered over to the DC jack, plugged it in, and I heard this scream from across the room. And it turned out that I did not plug a 9 volt DC jack in like I was supposed to. I plugged a significantly higher voltage DC jack in, subsequently frying the circuit board before I'd even tried it out. Now, this was an interesting experience because I had done all the work really nicely, but just failing to read one instruction at the end of the manual cost me a day and a half's work. And so I wanted to be honest about that because I think when you're trying anything new, it's really, really easy to make very, very stupid mistakes. And that's a really good lesson that we all need to remember. If I had quit when I did that kind of stupid mistake when I started guitar building, I wouldn't be where I am now. So it's a very humbling reminder that I am still very much very bad at making stuff without the effort. <laughs> However, I promised you a demo with a, a Centaur clone and a demo with a Centaur clone you shall get for approximately five seconds because I can't play guitar. My friend does actually have a Centaur clone, so I popped in to use it in his studio, but obviously he was too busy for me to mess around too much, so I'm going to leave you with a brief Tom York. In memory of the pedals that never made it. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> If you guys want to build one of these, I've put the link in my description and I would love to see you actually successfully use it and not fry the circuit board with the wrong connector. I won't be bitter, I've just really had a good time and I think you will too, so um, good luck with that. Somebody started hammering next door, that's my, my sign to go, so <laughs> thanks for watching.